I'm currently working on a full-length album in Traction Waveform, and I thought I'd share some waveform workflow tips that can help you to work smarter and faster. So you can get your singles done quickly, your EPs, your albums, and some of these really will help you with EPs and albums. You'll see what I mean in just a bit, but this first tip can be for anything, and that's to record all of your audio and your MIDI before you start to do any mixing. You can adjust levels and maybe even some panning, but don't start adding your compressors and EQs or anything like that. Just record all of your audio and MIDI in first, and it's going to sound not that great. You can turn your tracks all the way down or mute them if they're kind of in the way while you're recording. You want to get all of that raw audio and your MIDI in there before you start adding plugins. And there's a couple of reasons for this. One, some plugins do add latency, so you want to watch out for that. But the second thing is plugins will start to use up your CPU power. And if you have your audio interface set to a low buffer, if you start adding plugins in there, they're going to start to eat up that CPU power that you need for your low latency recording. And after you're done recording everything in, you have all of your raw audio and your MIDI in there, you can start to add plugins. And if you start to get stutters and other weird things from having plugins in there, you can increase the buffer size on your audio interface. Now this next tip can really help if you're working on a full length album or an EP, because you kind of want the songs to have a similar sound, like your guitars, you kind of want to have a similar sound, your drums, you want to have similar sound from track to track to track, and maybe even your vocals. Sure, there's going to be some variation between songs, but for the most part, you kind of want to start with that similar sound, and then you can take it from there, what you add in after. Now you can go into each individual plugin on a track and save the settings as a preset to use for say your bass guitar, your vocals, whatever track you're working on, you would save those settings. Now an easier and much quicker way to do this is to save entire plugin chains. And I'll show you what I mean. So you can see on my guitar bus here, I have all of these plugins loaded. Now, if I was to go into each individual plugin and save my settings as a preset, that's going to take a lot of time just for this one track because there's a ton of plugins just right there. Now, what I can do is hold down the shift key on my computer keyboard and then click on each plugin in here. And you can even do this with your pan and level plugin in waveform. So you want to click on that because you can save those levels. If you record your guitar at the same level every time, you might as well save those levels because chances are they will work in the next track. Of course, you can adjust those later. So now we have everything selected. You can see they're all highlighted in there. Let's right click on it. And then we wanna to go to save selected plugins as a preset then you can just give it a name in here and save it. Make sure it's something that you can remember. Now I've already done this, so I'll show you the next step. So now the way to load it is I have the side browser closed down right now. I just want to go up to the eyeball there, click on that, and then click on this right here. It's going to open up the browser. And for this plugin chain preset, I remember I named it something with final in there. So I just enter final and then I can see in here what I have. I have a bunch in here with final. I just want to find my guitar bus. So there it is. I just click and drag it over to the track. And there you can see it's loaded up all of the plugins with all of the same settings on my guitar bus. And these are the settings that I want to use across this full album. And I might want to use it on some singles or another EP later on. And I can easily go back and do that just by clicking and dragging it onto the track. It's so easy. So once you have all of your audio and MIDI recorded in, you can start dragging these plugin chain presets over to help you quickly mix your songs. Now, another tip that can help you save time is to use templates. So you can see on the welcome screen here, we have project templates at the top and there's some that just come with traction waveform. You can try these ones out if you want, but I have some that I've saved in here. And you can see I have Horror Album 1 Basic, and that's the album that I'm actually working on right now. So I'm just going to click on that one right now, and it's going to want me to create a new project using this template. So I'm just going to put in there, Test Horror. All right. And we can save it wherever we want. Right there. And once you're ready to create it, we can create Project. So you can see that it's brought in all of the tracks that I want to use on this album. So I have my guitar bus here with guitar one and two. I have my bass guitar, my drum bus, 
with all of my drums, and this is where it's going to save you a ton of time. If you use multi-output instruments like drums, then you'll know what a pain it is to set them up every time that you want to work on a track. This way, you can actually save a template that's just those drums. Maybe you have drums set up for rock music, and then another multi-output drum set set up for indie music or lo-fi, something like that, you can save each template that has those drums already set up. And of course you can change things around if you want. Now, how do you save a template? And you can have a completed song in here with all your audio tracks and everything, and we can still save a template. You would just go down to file, and then you want to go to save edit as template. And you can see in here, we can name it whatever we want, and we can even give it a description. And you want to uncheck this include clips. Now you can include any audio clips that you want. Maybe there's some audio clips that you want to use from track to track to track. You can keep those in there if you want, just make sure you check that. But if you don't want those audio clips in there, be sure to uncheck the include clips and it's just going to save the basic layout like this and it will save those plugins. So if you don't want to start with all these plugins in here, you can go in and save the template again as whatever you called it bare or whatever you want to do. It's up to you what you call it. But using templates can be a huge time saver and it's also kind of motivation. You can see, all right, I got to do my guitars, my bass, my drums, my lead vocals, vocal double, whatever you see in there. It gives you that map of what you need to record. Now this next tip is going to help to keep you organized in Traction Waveform and that's to use folders. So if you go to your projects tab, and this is the page I actually have Traction Waveform set to open when I load it up, what you'll see is all of your projects listed down here. And if you're like me, you might have different bands or projects that you work under a different name for. You want to keep all of that organized so you can go back and quickly load things up if you need to mix them or work on them some more. And you don't want to have to go through this huge list like I have right here. So you can see at the top here, I have Silver Rocket Surfers. So that's the main project that I've been working on right now. And you can see in here, I have EP1. So that was my first EP. I have singles that I'll work on and you can expand these and you can see we have more songs in there. I have EP2 and then this is the current one that I'm working on here. And this was another album or EP that I was going to release and I just never got around to it. And if I wasn't working on Silver Rocket Surfers, I could just collapse everything in there or I can expand it again and have everything in there like that. And I have other folders in here and you can have folders within folders. Like you saw, I have this folder, which is the EP one and the other folders that are all within this Silver Rocket Surfers folder. Now, how do we create a folder? very easy. You go down here to create folder and let's just name this new test. Open that up. You can see at the top, I have a new folder called new test. Now, if I had projects that I wanted to put in there, I could just drag them in there. We'll say, look, I have this one here called new test. We'll drag that in there let go. Now that project is listed in the new test folder, and this doesn't change anything on your computer, like the location of any of your files. It's just for organization within the program. And if I don't want new tests in this folder anymore, I can just quickly drag and drop it down in here. Now, another useful tip that you can use for singles, EPs, albums, anything like that, and you should use this all the time is to save separate edits for every revision of a song that you do. And what I mean by this is you can have your song already mixed and ready to render so you can master it or listen to it in your car or in your earbuds on your phone, wherever it is you want to listen to it and test it out. You can easily render that edit, go test it out, and maybe you hear some things that you want to tweak. Maybe the kick drum's a little too low or the snare's too low, something like that. You want to go back and you want to tweak some things. So you go back and you tweak some things, but don't save it over top of that original edit. And what you want to do is save a new edit before you start doing all of those tweaks. So you can just go down to file, save edit as, and you can see this is going to automatically save it as edit two, and it's automatically going to save in the same folder where the first edit is. So I'll save that. And now I have edit two and any changes I make in here and save, they're going to be on edit two. 
And you can keep doing this at three, four, five, whatever. And the reason why you want to do this is because when we're working on these songs and we're listening to them over and over and we go and bring them to our car or to other headphones or whatever else we bring them to, our ears are probably fatigued and you might start to overmix things. And then the next day you're going to listen to it and you're going to be like, what was I thinking when I did that mix? I really like edit four way better than edit five that I just spent two hours remixing. Well, if you still have edit four, you can go back and quickly load up edit four and it's there for you. You made no changes to it and you didn't lose any of the settings for the take that you really liked the most. So get in the habit of using file save edit as and creating new edits. Now, another tip for recording in traction waveform is to use comping It's extremely useful and it can make sure that you have the best take before you do your final mix down. Now click the video on the screen to learn more about comping in traction waveform. It's so easy to do and you're going to love it. And if you loved this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching for audio tech TV. I'm Zane. Keep creating fist bump, thumbs up.